verdict is in. Insomniac Spider-Man has pretty fun web-swinging mechanics. We all know the swinging is the number one fantasy everyone wants to see realized in these games. You can have a great story, varied missions, tons of unlockables, but it doesn't amount to much if you can't enjoy hurling yourself across the streets and over rooftops on a sticky thread while doing flips, maybe wall runs. It's the number one thing we knew we had to get right. We want you to feel great. Instantly we pick up the controller. And yeah, sure, Insomniac did a good job here. The animations look cool, the controls are responsive, the web launch and dive bomb are nice innovations. A lot of players find themselves wondering, why would I ever use fast travel when I can just swing where I'm going? By the way, the correct answer is that you get to see these neat animations. But the real question is, has Insomniac stumbled upon the Holy Grail? Have they created the best web swinging ever? Well, to answer that, we'll have to take a trip back to 2004. The one, the only, the original open-world Spidey experience, Treyarch's legendary, beloved, timeless Spider-Man 2, the former champion in the web-swinging arena. So how's the old fan favorite looking now, next to a big-budget Sony production that looks gorgeous on PS4 and PS5? Well, basically, Spider-Man 2 really focuses on physics simulation and doesn't do a lot to spare the player from inconvenience, while Insomniac Spider-Man sands off a lot of the rough edges to make sure the experience remains seamless throughout. For example, Spider-Man 2 won't stop you from colliding with walls, having your web lines cut short by obstructions, or probably most irritating of all, ending up arcing too low to the ground and losing your swing altogether. Just because the game lets you swing at a given moment doesn't mean you'll get where you want to go. It's up to the player to get it right, and to not completely suck. Taking a much friendlier approach, the 2018 game ensures that your swings always maintain enough height to avoid literally failing a swing, and most obstacles will automatically be <coughs> Peter parkoured around without any extra inputs. Where Spider-Man 2 actively punishes the player for miscalculations, Insomniac's game just works around your mishaps and transitions into wall running or parkour flips. In effect, you get a chance to play it cool and tell yourself, I meant to do that, and then continue on with a totally unplanned move that looks seamless and awesome anyway. It's pretty hard to outright screw up in the 2018 version for this reason, and that means moments of frustration are almost nowhere to be found. There's good reason for this. Insomniac's playtesting led to an interesting discovery. Players overall preferred having the physics fudged a bit if it meant avoiding persistent control issues. And decisions like these culminated in a system that's easy for a first-timer to pick up and play within seconds of taking control. And the result speaks for itself. Spider-Man PS4's web swinging surpasses that of Spider-Man 2. Insomniac's game, I'm confident in saying I think has better web swing than this. Yeah, <laughs> just looking at this slow. right now, it's like, oh god. I can see why it would be fun at the time. Like, at the time. I'm, the Hulk was better than this. So does the difference between the two games just boil down to accessibility and polish? Not quite. Because as a result of these mechanics, both games take different approaches to how they represent Spider-Man himself. Struggling against physics and failing frequently is a fundamentally different experience to zipping around the city carefree. If we're taking a character perspective, the 2018 approach makes a lot of sense. Peter Parker never really seems to struggle with web swinging after all comes naturally, effortlessly to him. It can be exhilarating, but he's also pretty at ease. That's how he blows off steam when he's not stopping crimes. In the meantime, I'll swing around the city and do some Spidey stuff. Of course Spidey's not gonna run into the ground every three minutes or smack headlong into the face of a building because he misjudged the reach of his web line. He's just too good for that. And while you're sailing through the city, you're treated to a ton of flashy animations that are placed front and center at all times. You can even safely move the camera to any angle you like to better admire Spidey's moves. Whereas in Treyarch's game, you're kind of stuck watching the same animation every time, and don't even think about trying to spin the camera. Ugh. Most impressively, Spidey 2018 doesn't demand nearly as much precision in its controls, yet it still manages to make it trivially easy to end up exactly where you want at any time. 
you're able to change directions while swinging much more easily. And thanks to the zip to point system, you can zoom directly to any nearby spot you want with a single input. Except in a way that gives you full control and doesn't feel automated like... another game I could mention. Maximum precision without letting the game go on autopilot? Increased environmental interactivity with pretty animations? Sign me up! So case closed. Spider-Man 2018 wins, right? Well, hang on. There are actually some benefits to the punishing physics of the old 6th gen swinging system. One thing fans were concerned about before the PS4 game even released was whether fall damage would be included. So this question comes from everyone everywhere. Is it fall damage? Yes, exactly. Insomniac chose to let you fall with a stylish superhero landing to keep things nice and smooth, but Treyarch used fall damage back in 2004 to give their system a sense of stakes. Diving off the game world's tallest building and only swinging at the last possible moment is arguably a lot more exciting when you can actually go... if you're not careful. True, our pal Pete probably wouldn't make this sort of mistake, but it does add a bit of thrill just knowing there are consequences for failure. The game also reinforces the importance of skill through an easily overlooked mechanic, which our good friend Bruce Campbell style, refers style, to as... Style, style, style is everything. The more clean swings and air tricks you pull off, the more your spider reflexes meter replenishes, but your gains will immediately drop off if you lose momentum or smack into something. You probably won't even notice this is happening unless you access all the game's hint markers, and even then it's not a very strong incentive for good performance, but what it is is evidence of the game's focus on skillful control and encouraging player improvement. This is the most fundamental difference between the two games. Spider-Man 2's mechanics require a lot of work. Much more work than Peter Parker actually puts into his swinging, but like competitive sports, the high skill ceiling and raised stakes make things really engaging and really rewarding when you manage to pull off tricky things without a hitch. Now, full disclosure, even for a veteran player, the swinging can be too unforgiving sometimes. Most of the open world experience consists of building up a nice flow and maintaining a high speed for maybe 20 seconds before you smack into a building or awkwardly run out of momentum. And the challenge races, oh boy. These things are insanely difficult, and the game knows it. To beat the tougher ones, you've got to attain maximum speed and precision in a highly variable physics-based system, and there's only one way to do that. Playing them over and over and over again. If you're not at exactly the right angle for your web to connect to one of these antennas that you're supposed to loop around, you might as well start over. And once you finally do complete one, you're greeted by this... reward? Now let me show you how much simpler it is to max out on one of these in Insomniac's game. So I haven't played any of these in quite a few months, don't know when the last time was. Let's see if I can three-star it on my first attempt. There's the drone. I'm not gonna lie, feeling pretty good about myself right now. Yep, what I expected. It's maybe a little too easy, but at least everyone can platinum it. In any case, Spider-Man 2 isn't just rewarding because it requires so much dedication. It's also an impressively tactile experience for a game that's 16 years old as you hurtle faster and faster forward. Sideways movement becomes almost impossible, and as you pick up speed, the controller begins to vibrate, the motion blur kicks in, and besides the sound of your web shots, the only audio becomes an overpowering rush of heavy wind resistance. It may be a strange thing to consider as a selling point, but the sound design here is really effective because swinging in real life wouldn't just feel graceful like ballet. It's more of an extreme sport. Even though the physics system is still exaggerated, we need to do a lot of cheating, a lot of breaking rules of physics so that they get what they want. I think this is the only swinging system that's ever approached feeling like a simulation. 
as great as style and flow might be, chaotic, dangerous exhilaration just makes you feel alive. But I think the biggest point in Spider-Man 2's favor is the sheer range of possibilities its system allows. I've played this game at least a few times a year for 16 years now, Jeez. and I still feel like I'm experiencing new interactions and new quirks in the physics system whenever I play. The system is restricted so little compared to its cutting-edge counterpart that you really feel like you're pulling off new moves that have never been done in quite such a way before. I can sit down and do nothing but swing for half an hour without feeling like I've reached a total wall with the mechanics. But unfortunately, I can't say the same about the 2018 game. I'll have a blast for the first minute or so of swinging, but after just a few minutes, I feel like I've executed pretty much every conceivable combination of moves. Most swings appear to have the same arc as one another, your speed reaches the limit pretty easily, and there's only so many combinations of air tricks you can do to keep things interesting. The animations look beautiful, very distinctly Spider-Man-like, and are far flashier than Spider-Man 2, which mostly involves Spidey holding the same pose during every swing and occasionally doing air flips. But if you're aiming for constant variety, you'll find you have a lot more trouble pushing the system to its limits. In fact, you can get some pretty wonky behaviors out of the physics if you try to swing in a way the game doesn't intend for. I mean, look at this. The game has a tightly interlocked set of moves that work very well together and are innately satisfying to pull off, but it doesn't intend for you to get particularly creative with how you swing. Deciding the order in which you pull off moves is pretty much the limit of personal expression allowed. You're just not going to be able to do stuff like this, or this, or this. The system's just too smooth to allow for interesting interactions like that. Now don't get me wrong, at the end of the day, both systems are fantastic and among the most engrossing movement mechanics ever devised for a video game. Swinging on its own is just far more interesting than sprinting or rolling repeatedly or jumping from one platform to another. Insomniac Spider-Man makes sure this experience never fails to provide immediate wish fulfillment, allowing you to pull off just about every signature Spidey move you can imagine, and with style to spare. But even if the 2018 iteration does the best job of making you feel like Spider-Man, I think Spider-Man 2's web swinging is a more interesting, unique, and fulfilling experience for those who endure its learning curve and occasional awkwardness. A better Spider-Man mechanic? Maybe not. But a better video game mechanic in general? Well, in case you haven't already, I suggest you give it a try. Hey everyone, thanks a lot for watching. I've been working on this video for the past couple months and it was really a way for me to do tribute to two games that I really like and that I have played a whole lot. Hundreds and hundreds of hours at this point, so it's the least I could do, I think. I've definitely got more to say about some other games and maybe even movies, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more along these lines. Currently, I'm working on a 45-minute retrospective on Spider-Man 2, which should naturally complement this video pretty nicely. And I have a few things to say about some other big franchises, too. I wonder which one I should do first. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed this video, and that you all enjoy playing Miles Morales next month. For now, this is Caleb signing out. Spidey, you the man. <laughs>